human-like robot hand, drone delivery network, VR job interviews, real-time quadcopter surveillance and much more. This is MOSFET Weekly. Starting off with a couple of interesting use cases for virtual reality. First is this novel way to diagnose brain disorders. Headset manufacturer Vario has teamed with MachineMD to develop a system which can track users' eye and head movement to automatically detect the likelihood of certain neurological conditions. This kind of diagnosis currently can only be done by trained specialists, but the companies say that their new system works automatically, allowing lower-level medical professionals to easily carry out examinations, as well as lowering the average time it takes from 45 minutes down to 10 minutes. Researchers at the University of Cologne think that intelligence can be predicted through virtual reality games. They invited over 100 volunteers to their lab and had them play the job simulator game, as well as take a shortened version of the BIS-4 intelligence test. The analyses showed that participants who finished the game faster than others also had higher levels of general intelligence and processing capacity. The study showed that an increase of 17% in processing capacity correlated with an average of 3.7 minutes less being needed to complete tasks. The researchers say that these results suggest that VR games and scenarios could potentially be a useful tool for companies to supplement job interviews and performance assessments. In other news, Lockheed Martin has teamed with Korea Aerospace Industries and Red 6 Aerospace to introduce augmented reality training for the TF-50 aircraft and its variants. The platform, dubbed ATARS, or Airborne Tactical Augmented Reality System, enables trainee pilots to use real planes in the skies. But instead of other real planes to play the part of adversaries, it is all simulated, allowing for a variety of safe high-speed scenarios. The trend of drone deliveries continues with more companies gaining certification to fly beyond visual line of sight routes. Swiss drone manufacturer Rigitech became the first to operate a regular drone delivery route, this time in France. It will fly its long-range drone the Eiger between French laboratories, transporting blood and biological samples. This particular drone can carry a payload of up to 3 kilograms and medical boxes with up to 150 blood vials at a time. Sticking with deliveries, Wing announced their vision for implementing a drone delivery network across the US. In a recent video, CEO Adam Woodworth delved into the idea of the Wing delivery network, calling it a decentralised, automated system that can support high-volume drone delivery across a major metro area or a more sparsely populated region. The system marries their logistics automation software with three hardware sections. Firstly, the drones then Wing's easily deployable pads which facilitate drone takeoff, landing and charging, and finally their new autoloaders, which allow businesses to easily preload packages for automatic curbside pickups. Woodworth says that the company is aiming to scale up its operations to a point by 2024 where its network can handle millions of deliveries. Skybrows unveiled their Midnight Sun drone intelligence platform the other day, calling it the ultimate situational awareness tool. The system combines quadcopter live feeds with a vision system that can detect and track people in real time. In the example shown, they had police-enabled GPS on their phones and the system automatically overlays where they are on the feed. This allows command centres and operators to see exactly what's going on in a particular space, highlighting both friendlies and unknowns in a 3D environment. In a similar vein, Aerobotics launched a new counter-drone platform, The new Iron Drone system is part of a recent acquisition of a company with the same name and it provides an automated anti-drone platform that launches out of a box, intercepts drones that shouldn't be flying in the area and catches them with a ballistic net system. And rounding out this section, IE Spectrum uploaded a video touring the Palo Alto headquarters of Opener, the creators of the single-seater eVTOL dubbed the Black Fly, even allowing writer Glenn Zorpet to ride alone in the vehicle after a day's training. What's particularly interesting about the Black Fly is that since it is a single-seater aircraft and because of its relative small size, it is classed as an ultralight recreational vehicle, which does not require certification by the FAA. Moving on to manufacturing now. This week we've got a couple of interesting 3D printer modifications. YouTuber Morlock recently uploaded a video showing off a mod he's made for an Ender 3 3D printer which turns it into a metal-cutting electrical discharge machine. This is achieved using a custom-designed power supply, which creates the sparks to cut through metal sheeting. 
The 3D printable parts are available on printables.com and a Kickstarter was launched for the Power Core. The early bird version of the power supply is available for $399, which Morlock says is almost one-tenth the price of even the cheapest EDM system. Another YouTuber, Proper Printing, updated his project which prints resin on an FDM 3D printer. In this video, John focused on developing the light source and nozzle, trying to mitigate problems with premature curing and resin sticking, as well as changing the material to a more gel-like consistency. After almost quitting, he finally figured out a way to print and instantly cure the resin material to print a vase-like structure. More info and files are available on his website. In other 3D printing news, a new hotel complex is coming to Marfa, Texas. A partnership between hospitality entrepreneur Liz Lambert, 3D printing construction firm Icon, and big architecture firm are rebuilding and redesigning El Cosmico, a 60-acre campground hotel in Marfa, Texas. They state in their press release, the relocation and expansion of El Cosmico to more than 60 acres will showcase entirely new architectural approaches made possible by large-scale 3D printing including domes, arches, vaults and parabolic forms. The innovative development will feature El Cosmico guest units in addition to new hospitality programming, including a pool, spa and shared communal facilities. In electronics news, Andrew Bunny Huang released a very interesting blog post detailing a new way to look into chips without the usual hassle of having to remove, dissolve or grind them down. Dubbed infrared in situ or iris, the concept is really simple. You modify a digital camera microscope, removing the IR filter, then you shine a 1050 nanometer infrared light onto the chip. Since silicon is apparently transparent to IR light, it bounces up from the board and you can peer directly inside to inspect them. Very cool indeed. More autonomous driving services are rolling out around the world. This time a self-driving bus launches in Oxfordshire, UK. The electric autonomous bus has taken to the roads around the Milton Park near Didcot, shuttling some of the 9,000 employees who work at the Business and Science Park for free, running every 15 minutes from 7 in the morning to 6.30pm. There is currently a safety member sat in these buses who can take over the driving if the need arises, and journeys to further afield are planned for later in the year. In robotics, the Sanctuary AI bots I've been posting about for the past few months have completed their first deployment at a real-world commercial facility through its partnership with retailer Canadian Tire Corporation. The week-long pilot at the CTC-owned store successfully tested the general-purpose robot in a real-life store environment, with 110 retail-related tasks completed correctly, including front and back of store activities such as picking and packing merchandise, cleaning, tagging, labelling, folding and more. Life Architect recently uploaded a quick guide showing you how to easily incorporate ChatGPT directly into Google Sheets, basically turning it into a very powerful dynamic programmable application that can automatically research and calculate inputs through custom scripts. I have a feeling we're going to be seeing lots of examples of large learning models like ChatGPT being incorporated into all sorts of applications to increase efficiency and productivity, and I'm curious to see where it all goes. Here are a couple of other stories that didn't fit in with the other categories. Firstly, Hypershell launched a mini exoskeleton on Kickstarter. This foldable device attaches around the user's waist and connects to the legs, giving an extra one horsepower of output. According to the specification, it can offset 30 kilograms of weight, has a 16 mile range, works at up to 12 miles per hour speed, and weighs approx 1.8 kilograms. A Kickstarter was launched a few days ago, and it has already blown way past the original goals. Early bird prices are around $299, shipping worldwide, with a claimed shipping window of September this year, though caveat emptor obviously. And finally, Clone Robotics also demonstrated the newest version of their synthetic hand on YouTube. This hand has 24 degrees of freedom, 37 muscles, 2 hour battery life, a 7 kilogram operational load and weighs 750 grams. The clone hand is the most human level musculoskeletal hand in the world, actuated with clones proprietary hydraulic muscles and valves. Size and biometric characteristics are the same as human hand. Includes half of arm bone, full forearm and palm with all possible degrees of freedom. Thanks for watching. That's it for this week. 
Stay up to date with the latest technology trends by subscribing to this channel or visit mosfet.net for more news and feeds.